First of all, hold on, let me take this. Let me take this out. Let's try this again. Hi, you guys. That's better. Welcome back to the family. It's your girl, Colors, and I'm back with another video. And today's video is going to be kind of like a part two of my postpartum update if you've been following my channel i've just recently posted a video in regards to my postpartum experience when it comes to anxiety and depression i don't suffer from depression but i do suffer from anxiety i will touch up on it slightly in this video but if you want to know deeper as to what i'm talking about and that area of mental health just go ahead and check out that video nonetheless there are things that are going on outside of my anxiety so i just wanted to make sure i give an update on those things as well so if you want to know what else is going on as far as my postpartum just keep on watching now just to back up a little bit i am actually four almost five months postpartum if i keep looking down i'm looking down on the monitor noelle is close to rolling so i am keeping heavy eyes on her there are a couple things that kind of been happening along the way up into this point if you do not know i did end up getting an iud at my six week checkup my six week checkup everything came back pretty fine there was no issues or anything like that so i was clear to go ahead and get an iud so after getting the iud placed um they pretty much told me like hey don't have sex if you don't want to risk uh getting pregnant and in four weeks you'll come back to visit us and we'll make sure that it's still in the right place and then you would kind of just go about your life i ended up getting the morena which is a five year contraception i think that's what they call it so fingers crossed <laughs> that that remains the same but yeah um i got the morena and my experience uh getting it placed was a lot of pressure i did feel a bunch of cramps it wasn't that bad like i've seen in other videos even my friends have told me their experience with getting the iud was pretty bad but my doctor's office was very adamant on making sure they reminded me to take medicine prior. So I think that's what could have helped me because when I got my four week update, that one was a lot worse because I did not take medicine. But nonetheless, it still wasn't like crazy. At the same time, I wasn't actually getting anything placed. I just pretty much got a pet smear where they just open you up and look and see if it was in the right place i did end up having it trimmed down because uh david did let me know that he was uncomfortable with it he could feel it so they ended up um trimming it and bending it back but uh since then he did tell me again that he still does feel it at certain points so i may end up telling them to check it again i don't know I just might have them deal with it. I'm not really sure at this point if I have any side effects. I do know something's going on. So since having the Mirena placed, by the way, I did have it placed throughout my period. So that is another thing. If that is any helpful information, yeah, I was on my period when I got it placed. They didn't mind. So yeah. Um, so about time my cycle did end my cycle ended up at lasting actually pretty long i think it lasts like a week and a half i think which was kind of surprising because since having babies in general my cycle has been pretty chill it just kind of feels like i'm back to my old self when it comes to how my cycle is acting but it did come off but then 
there were some discoloration and stuff like that that just didn't seem normal so i have to go back to the doctor and make sure that everything's fine because a part of me feels like i'm having some type of reaction to the iud so i ended up even getting a speculum to look up there to see like hey is anything going on even if i like lost a tampon or something like that i don't know but i bought a speculum and it looks like it was like dripping blood a little bit in my cervix so maybe that's what was causing the random um discoloration i'm not really sure i'm definitely not gonna be telling my doctor i messed around with it because they're gonna write me off and say i'm the reason that it happened so i do have an appointment in a couple days so i'm hoping that it does go away i'm gonna go ahead and get baby girl because she is one and she's probably hungry so i can go ahead and feed her while trying to do this little update I I I baby girl's gonna be down here eating <laughs> i don't have no idea where i left off honestly but we just gonna keep pushing down the list because i'm lost <laughs> the next thing that has been going on is that i feel a little i don't know what's the best term for it but i'm not sleeping and it's not like i'm trying to sleep and can't sleep it's like i'm not sleepy at night so most nights I am staying up to like four or five o'clock in the morning doing whatever, doing whatever that I'm not supposed to be doing at four or five a.m. Um, only good part about it is it allows me to do all the night feedings and not really, I guess, feel a way about it. But I need to be sleeping. I need to get more rest because I still have to be up around eight a.m. seven thirty eight. Uh, to start getting like the baby day going because they wake up about 8 30 so I really need to do better and I think in some ways it's causing me to be a little sleep deprived and being a little sleep deprived causes stress so yeah you think it's funny yeah it's funny are you laughing at me um, next thing is, which is probably the biggest thing, and I kind of touched on this a little bit earlier, but I'm having a really hard time with anxiety. Again, check out that video if you want to know deeper about it. Yeah, mommy's handling it. The biggest thing I do want to say and mention on is how appreciative i am of the love and support everything you said in the comments in that video is really helpful and if you are a person battling any type of anxiety and depression i even advise you to watch the video but even more than that just really look down in those comments i think people are sending a lot of love support and guidance through this situation and this is the reason i do it for i feel very blessed to have the opportunity to engage with you guys so that i can be raw and open so one thing i do want to make sure that i do touch up on just really quickly and i don't want to turn this into like a whole spiritual thing but uh, i do want to make sure that it is known from my point of view that I think what I was saying in regards to a comment that I made in that postpartum video that I feel like God would choose me to have the testimony of my kids being taken away. And I can see how that is kind of taken wrong and no one gave negative, negative comments and in that video, absolutely not. If anything, the comments were beautiful and it was amazing to see how many people that are spiritually guided that made me feel really good but i think the way that i explained it was wrong but that's because i was speaking my raw emotions at that time so what i meant was uh, i definitely know and understand that it's not of god for him to take away my kids and i would never want to put that blame or for God to feel for me that I think he would be the one to do something like that. 
I think in the perspective that I was looking at it was, you know, how they say God will never put more on you than that you cannot bear. So I know that God knows that I'm a strong person and I'm strong because of him, because he's pulled me through so much that sometimes I think because the devil challenged me so much that God will also have to pull me through a situation like that. I want to be clear and I want to apologize to God if it came across that way, but God already knows that. He knows what I meant, he knows my heart. But me, a combination of prayer and I just want to make sure that I'm just not trying to fight this battle alone. So of course, prayer, love and all that stuff, but I am also going to seek help at the same time. It's an everyday battle, an everyday challenge, but I absolutely love my kids. They are the light of my life. Look at this. Oh, I absolutely love this face and my other little face in the room, but I just can't stop. Outside of that, like I said, I am still battling my anxiety and trying not for it to go into a side of depression. I do not see that being the case. But, I mean, like anything that is negative and weighing you down, it could happen and it's possible. But I'm trying to keep hold of that. But that's the reason why I am trying to be stress-free as much as possible, which is hard. Yeah, what else? Oh, big thing and this is kind of the main thing that i want to talk about in this video and that is my hair loss so uh over the years i've been losing a lot of hair but recently probably a couple of weeks ago i had washed my hair i was in a protective style ever since having no l and it was my first time actually washing my hair since having her and I actually have a massive amount of hair and I'm gonna try to also uh, put like a little clip up here. But I lost like this much amount of hair. Probably the amount of hair, if not more, on her head. And I really don't know why. I know it could be a combination of postpartum, but I also been losing hair prior to uh, having Noel even prior to having Nala. And I always kind of wrote it off as, you know, whatever, I'll, I have hair anyway. And I think since bit chopping, I'm not really fearful of not having hair. I was able to write it off, but I started to analyze the amount of hair that I lost. And I started to realize like, hey, it's probably not normal. <laughs> probably not normal every time water touched my hair, it is like falling down my back and like coming down my legs like every single time so i started to think that that is not normal so i decided to seek out for a dermatologist to analyze it because after some research one of the things they look at is you know the spacing of your parts and things like that if you have any bald spots and i discovered that i did that kind of got me worried and i don't want to draw no conclusions but I ended up looking for a list of doctors to look at it and I have an appointment at the end of this month to be continued in the update on that. Crossing fingers, they said that it's a good chance they might have to do a biopsy in order to figure out what the actual problem is. So yeah another thing that's contributing obviously to my postpartum and everything is that this one isn't nappy she's only napping like 30 minutes at a time and i don't know if it's because she's just going through a little phase but all of a sudden her naps is only like 30 minutes 30 minutes that's not enough nappy time she sleeps pretty well through the night like she goes to bed like 8 30 and wakes up maybe about one and then wakes up again around four or five six six thirty and then at seven thirty but during the day is where the problem is if she don't want to nap but we'll pull through it what can you do oh another thing is that i am pretty much completely like done with work i am officially a stay-at-home mom i've been home for like six months now and that's crazy so 
going on seven months. It's seven months now. It's a transition. I actually went through a phase a couple of weeks ago where I was kind of think, considering going back to work because I don't know if I like the idea of not having money. I'm not used to asking. I'm not used to explaining my expenses as much, but this is also what is best for my family. So pray for me, y'all, because this is going to be so weird. I've been working since I've been 16 and I always had a job since then. I'm curious to see what things are gonna look like, how it's gonna pan out, if I can actually deal with being at home. So, I guess we'll see on that. Also, this girl is learning how to roll since like yesterday. So now my anxiety is peaking a little bit because rolling, and you know from that video of the anxiety, that is a part of what contributed to the postpartum. So I don't think I'm as bad, but she's also haven't rolled yet. So I catch myself checking on her every two seconds to make sure that she hasn't rolled in her bassinet. So just gonna pray about it. <laughs> Another thing is Nala is getting really bored and I think that is starting to really bother me. It's taking a lot of my energy to have to kind of take place of what daycare or school would like when it comes to playing, learning and that type of thing. Pretty much everything school is about. I have to be that for her and being that we're in the coronavirus century, it's like twice as hard because I can't really go out like that and there's no one here to play with her outside of us and we're born we're old people so I really wish there was kids around so I've been debating if I want to test out putting her in like a Montessori program and stuff like that figure out if that's something I actually want to do or if it's just like my emotions getting the best of me I'm not really positive Ooh, my eye hurt I'm not really positive, but I'm hoping that something gives. Another thing is after having Noel and being in quarantine and all that other stuff, I actually put on weight. I don't even afraid to say how much, but basically I put on like five pounds heavier than I ever been. And I don't know if it bothers me yet, but it's like, dang, I'm almost 200 pounds and I have never been that close. I usually been around the 187, 189 range. Now it's like between 193 and 196. So it's been like jumping between those two. So now it's like, dang, I'm about to be 200 pounds. So do I need, need to really figure out life? Because I don't want to be 200 pounds. There's nothing wrong with being 200 pounds, but I just don't want to be 200 pounds. So it's like, dang. So I have put on quarantine weight. I don't know, maybe I need to go on another juice cleanse. Also, one thing is I thought I would never reconsider it. Like never, ever, 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 ever. But I'm about, to, I'm I'm not even debating. I'm in the beginning stages of wondering if I'm willing to do this. I don't think so. But the thought of relactating has been a thing because of the reflux and everything. Baby girl, it seems like no milk is helping her that she is liking. She's throwing up a lot and puking and all the other stuff every time we give her one of our milks. So I'm wondering if she would do it to my breast milk. So I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I don't know if I'm really willing to with the two and the two. I don't know how I will find time. But if I were to, I definitely would make sure I just build a stash first before I even consider like just giving it to her. You know, it's gonna probably take a while to even get them out. I don't I don't I don't even know if I'm willing to do it. I'm just letting you know that I'm dancing around the idea if it's for the sake of her actually eating. So we'll we'll, we'll see if it got there. We'll we'll and the last thing is is that I don't have any stretch marks. I just wanted to notify that part, even though I did put on the extra weight, I don't have any stretch marks. I still do have the dark line. I do not think that is going nowhere because 
I kind of already had a pretty prominent line. But now, it's just definitely not going anywhere. So, what can we do? I actually kind of like it. So, yeah, I just need the hair to get a beach body so I can expose it. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. That is kind of the update as a nutshell. If you have any questions about my postpartum, my journey, anything in that regards, just go ahead and comment down below. Like this video, subscribe to the channel, and we are out of here. You want to say bye? No Ellie Ellie, no Ellie Ellie, no Ellie Ellie, no Ellie Ellie, no Ellie Ellie. <laughs>